Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Zia, a clinical psychologist specializing in transgender care. Welcome to my channel. Today, I would like to talk to you about uh, the hazards, I would say, I wanted to say dangerous, but I think dangerous is a little extreme word to use, hazards of listening to too many voices when it comes to your own gender identity. And I would like to tell you when and how you can actually tell whether you are being overly influenced by too many voices, when to pull back, and when it's actually time to seek uh, additional help, additional support, additional advice, seek those other external voices in order to help you to make a decision. This video is for anybody who is either questioning their gender identity and is trying to figure it out, or for anybody who just realized your trends and trying to figure out what to do about it, or anybody who is already started or midway through your transition, and you're also running into certain things in your transition, maybe you're not seeing results, and you are also listening to a lot of those external voices. So what do I mean by listening to too many voices? Well, we don't exist in a vacuum. All of you don't exist in a vacuum. So you're surrounded by either your loved ones, your family, your friends. In addition to that, you're also surrounded by media. You're also surrounded by network, by social networks. So because today we have so many people utilizing social platforms, utilizing internet platforms, everybody, and I said it before, everybody is holding a megaphone and they're shouting from the top of their lungs and everybody is spreading their opinion. Some people are uh, go beyond their opinion, such as myself, where they're actually sharing uh, information, uh, a much more concrete, much more useful information. But the point is, there's, we're constantly bombarded by so many noises, no matter where we look. All you have to do is just wake up and go on any social platform, and you are being suddenly sucked into everybody's voices on everything. Now, when you are struggling with gender dysphoria, and especially when you are in early stages and you're trying to figure out because you feel like something is off the kill, but you don't know exactly what it is, it is natural, of course, to go and seek those voices. It's okay to go and Google information. It is natural to go and seek support of maybe a professional to clarify things. The problem becomes for all of us when we're starting to listen to too many voices that are giving their input into our situation. Because our situation is unique. Your situation is incredibly unique, individualistic to you, who, who you are as an individual. When people give their opinion, oftentimes, if not almost all of the time, their opinion is based on two things. One, it is based on uh, their current level of knowledge, based on a subject you're asking them about. So if you're asking anybody, your family member, your coworker, your friend, um, about your gender identity, questioning your gender identity, or if you're asking anybody about your transition goals, you're asking anything related to transgender and gender diverse issues, chances are the response is going to be equivalent to their level of knowledge. And most people just don't have the depth of knowledge related to these issues. And two, chances are they're going to project onto you a lot of things that have nothing to do with you. And they will project subconsciously. They could easily project perceptions of how they want you to remain to be. Parents often, by the way, do this. They can often project uh, their own transphobia without even realizing it. They will project their own beliefs. This is what we as human beings do. Psychologists, by the way, are not immune to it all also. As much as I try to be objective and as much as I try to uh, be more um, detached from my projections when I work with individual clients, of course, I will also have my blind spots. And of course, I'm also more susceptible to projecting. But given the fact that I've been working in this field for so long, and given the fact that I'm so knowledgeable in transgender issues and in non-binary issues, the chances of me not being objective and the chances of me um, not be uh, of chances of me of projectings are really really small compared to people who have no knowledge so you got to keep that in mind when you're seeking uh, somebody else's opinion and again it is so common to reach out to people and to ask them what they think or what advice they can give you as human beings we all try to do this a lot of times this is often just the way for us to solve a problem. A lot of times, she's seeking out uh, toward others. It's our way of brainstorming on possible solutions. Here's the problem with too many voices. I'm going to use cooking analogy. 
Imagine that you are a chef in the kitchen and you're trying to cook your own identity. You're trying to figure out, or maybe you're cooking your own transition. You're trying to figure out what to do, what kind of elements of transition to go through. You're trying to figure out what changes you're already having. So here you are, you're cooking this meal called your gender identity and potentially for some of your transition. And suddenly you realize that you need to maybe improvise a little bit. Maybe you need to add something. And instead of going out and being very discerning whose advice you ask, you're starting to bring other cooks into your kitchen, your family, your friends, a lot of people on the internet who have no experience at all in cooking. You're bringing them into the kitchen. So in other words, now you're surrounding yourself, not with actual chefs who know what you're making, who can actually give you a very good, valuable quality perspective and very good quality advice but you're surrounding yourself by people who maybe never even cooked they're looking at your meal and, and they're just thinking gee i don't know maybe add a little bit more salt when salt is the last thing you need so this is the analogy that works with getting information from a lot of different sources it's akin to having too many cooks in the kitchen who are not qualified for cooking your meal what kind of meal do you think you're going to have in the end? I can tell you right now, it's going to be one tasteless and probably not very good type of meal. Versus when you are inviting one or two qualified cooks in the kitchen to give you advice. And even then, you should discern, always discern the advice they give you. Now, how do you know when you're getting to the point where... Um, you are listening to too many voices and it's time to pull back. It's time to exercise your boundary and it's time to limit how many voices you're listening to. One of the ways to know is this. When we are struggling and we're trying to shed some light on an issue, we're trying to solve the problem. And when we reach out for other people's guidance or opinions, if they give us an opinion or if we get too many voices that are not qualified to give us that opinion, what's going to happen is that you most likely will feel more anxious, you will feel more undecided, you will feel even more confused, you will feel more overwhelmed. You're going to go into decision fatigue where you have so much information that it's now affecting your decision-making process. And a lot of this information is not a good quality information. That's how you know you're listening to too many voices. If the information you're seeking, instead of helping you, aiding you, guiding you, if instead it's making you feel more confused, if instead it's making you uh, feel a lot more conflicting emotions, including anxiety and potential depression, that's a big sign for you to pull out and to exercise your boundary and not to listen to all of those voices. This is how you know. How do you also know when to seek out the voices? When you yourself are dealing with a phenomenon that is new to you that you don't know much about. And for a lot of you, struggling with being confused about your gender is going to be a fresh new phenomenon. For a lot of you, trying to figure out when once you realize you're transgender, trying to figure out what, if anything to do about it, is also going to be a new phenomenon. And that's a really good starting point to seek information. But again, remember, you're the cook in the kitchen. You're cooking the meal. Your meal is your gender identity. Your meal is potentially transition. Your meal is all of the elements related to gender. Make sure that the cooks you're inviting in are the cooks who actually work with those ingredients. In other words, you want to invite or you want to get information from people such as myself. Yes, such as myself. I'm going to put myself out there because I'm specialized solely in transgender and non-binary issues. And I feel I'm highly qualified to talk about gender dysphoria and different ways gender dysphoria manifests and various viable uh, treatment options as well to treat gender dysphoria. So you want to pull from professionals such as myself. You want to pull from other professionals who specialize in this field. You want to, if you're looking at surgical transition, you want to look at doctors, surgical doctors, gender affirming doctors who have written blog posts on particular surgical procedures. You want to listen to people, for example, like Sid Gallagher that puts out constantly, puts out educational content on TikTok and on Instagram, where she talks about what you might expect, issues you might run in, things you might anticipate uh, drain free top surgery or not drain free top surgery so you want to listen to all of those providers who are actually about talking those things that's how you know you're getting very direct and clear information you obviously want to avoid cooks who are not even cooks who are not even chefs who are just you know, uh, people who meddling with ingredients, such as high media platforms, people who are talking about these issues who should have absolutely no um no reason to talk about these issues 
because they're not qualified and you want to avoid the rest of the public who again don't know what they're talking about it is okay to go and seek information from somebody who is trans who is non-binary who has gone through certain elements or all elements of gender transition it is okay to also listen to people who have detransitioned and to understand uh what what happened to understand their stories because those stories are incredibly important to all of us but the cooks you don't want to invite in your kitchen again are those who are not qualified. And you want to exercise your discernment. You want to limit your information so that you don't go into information uh, overload. Decide who is going to be your source and maybe limit your sources to two to five individuals and just stop there and see if those individuals, can even talk today, are going to give you information that you need. And if they do, that's great. So that's what I got to say about too many cooks in the kitchen. I see this all of the time. I see a lot of people who come to me in working with me who have had so many voices influencing them that they don't even know um, where they stand, which is very, very challenging. The, in the end of the day, you have to really listen to yourself. And yes, gender is confusing and gender dysphoria is incredibly complicated and it can manifest in many different ways. And there's a lot of people who do have gender dysphoria, but who are not transgender and i will make a video talking about it because again gender dysphoria is complicated and there are people who can experience gender dysphoria for various reasons a lot of times it can be confused with body dysmorphia and other elements but may still not identify as transgender at a core or non-binary at the core so comment below let me know have you gotten in the situation where you invited too many cooks in the kitchen what happened to your meal and if you are just starting to cook what are you planning to do about it and how are you going to limit your sources uh, also come below and let me know if you ever felt like you experienced the information overload where you hit the decision fatigue which can be very very challenging let me know love reading all of your comments and i will see you all next time bye